Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Alathrax. And of course, welcome back to the sandbox mode, where today we're going to be changing up the starter fortress, so as soon as the campaign comes out, we can instantly start it. Right now, I am finally in the development branch, which means a lot of the updates I'm currently already playing around with, but most of them are not quite finished yet. Already, I did have a warning from the powers that be that I shouldn't be messing around with missiles right now because they're not currently working properly in the dev branch. The AI also isn't currently finished yet for the campaign itself, and Fog of War is currently turned off because people are still testing it out, trying to see if the AI is doing what they want it to do, and yeah, we're not quite ready yet, but we're getting far, far closer. So, what changes are we going to be looking out for as we make our fortress our home? Really, the main change that we're looking out for is this, the ammunition change. So now the ammunition boxes have way more ammunition in them, so if you put them down, that's 1,000 ammo, but they don't automatically regenerate anymore. Back before this update, they would constantly regenerate at a slow pace, and if you had enough of them, you could pretty much constantly fire at the enemy at full capacity. But now that's just not the case. You need to use the ammunition processors. And eventually, apparently we may be getting a multi-block item, similar to the fuel refineries, which can make ammo far more efficiently. So we have an ammunition processing center. But right now we just have the basic ammunition processor and we do now have access to the simple fuel processor as well, which I'm fairly certain was in the game quite some time ago. Let's change my paint scheme. There we go. I'm almost certain of it, though I could be going mad. So ammunition, we do now need to pay attention to. Personally, I really like the idea of this change. I don't know if I'll like it in practice, but that's the whole point of doing the campaign soon. But I like the idea of having ships which are there purely as manufacturing ships, having fortresses which act to resupply the ships have. I really like that idea, personally. Fleets need to be supplied. And now this makes that more important. On top of this, there is a whole host of changes happening in the campaign. There's a new capture system, there is the actual AI change, which makes them a little bit more dynamic, there's loads of other stuff, and there are so, so many new prefabs. It's kind of unbelievable. We even have mortars now, just as prefabs. If you go into hull prefabs, you can have an entire ship, which is basically pre-built, well, a very hollow ship, admittedly, no weapons and no top to it. But these look really good if I quickly just place this down. So much so, I'm tempted, just a very fun little video soon, if you would all like to see, to try and make a ship or some kind of design only using all these new prefabs. And there are a lot of them. We have tanks, we have jets, which I think looks phenomenal. We have hovercrafts and hovercraft trainer, which has some of the AI already there, so you can figure out how everything works, which I really like the idea of. We have the submarine trainer, there is just... So much stuff, and I am so tempted to try and make a purely prefab ship, only messing around with the armor, but having everything else just prefabs. And I think it's potentially somewhat feasible, and you'll probably make a decent ship, because these prefabs do not look bad at all. In fact, from my first cursory glance, so don't take this as 100% truth, they look competitive. At least some of them do. Again, haven't looked at them enough. I don't really like using prefabs much. I like designing my own stuff and learning that way. But yes, yeah, some of these look absolutely fine. If not really good. So then, onwards to what we're actually doing today though. We are making the starter fortress a little bit more feasible. Because I do like to have the fortress able to defend itself. Although I'm going to be very aggressive most likely. Since I am focusing on a lot faster ships than usual. All of our designs, our planes, everything are quite quick. So most likely we're going to be raiding the enemy using strike attacks and everything else. I would like the fortress though to be able to defend itself. While not being overly expensive. So currently it is 120,000. So I wouldn't want this to go much more over... 160, maybe 200,000 at most, but bear in mind you do get a lot more resource now in the campaign. It's something like near 40 per second. It's definitely over 30, so you can have a lot more resource than you used to. So first questions first, what are we going to do in terms of weaponry? And I think, because I absolutely love them, we are going to be going with mortars. And most importantly though, we're going to be going with smaller, more rapid fire mortars, and lots of them. So what I would like is a whole cram section here, hence why I've started to remove things already, which is going to be our main weapon. After that, I'm thinking some light 
advanced cannons, maybe a couple of them using very light weaponry like flak or something else. That way we're good against very slow and very light. Medium ships are going to be a problem, but, you know, we have other vehicles which should be defending the base, which should be able to deal with those. After that, I need to make sure our detection system is up and ready. So yes, we are finally using detection systems in our tests, and most importantly, I want to be using this. The vehicle transmitter. I believe this allows us to have the main vehicle tell all the smaller vehicles where the enemy is. That way we don't need too much detection systems on things like the dart, which is really cheap. And in fact, now that the ammo is even cheaper since you can give them the empty boxes and the empty fuel boxes and simply feed off the motherships, we really don't want to be giving them all of this stuff as well because it just racks up the cost on something which is meant to be disposable. The darts are going to die and they are going to die constantly. Now as for the shape of this, I do want it so it's still perfectly player accessible. That means the player can get around everywhere on the ship or at least most parts of the fortress. And it still looks like it's somewhere which is meant to be used. So I want it to look like it's been retrofitted, but it, you can still tell it's meant to be the starter fortress. So what I'm thinking is what we could do is add a kind of shield section at the front, which is sort of strapped onto the front of the vehicle. And then we have the weapons here. We are going to be removing all of these stairs here, but then the stairs are going to wrap around and that way they're still going to this section down here and then up through here. That way everything is still perfectly accessible. At least that's the idea currently. So, let's get to work clearing some space and then we can see if I can make small mortars. Okay, I don't think this is particularly efficient, but this is going to be really easy to copy and paste absolutely everywhere. So, don't copy this if you want to be good at the game, but... This should be okay. So we have auto connectors here and here. They're all connecting like that. That's fine. And that way we can put these next to each other without a problem. The firing piece goes there and then we can have gauge pretty much anywhere we want. That is a really, really weak cram cannon. Okay, I'm going to redo that. So I've staggered it into sets of three. And that looks so cool when it's firing. And three. Although I think one of them is broke. Yep, that's definitely one which has been pasted wrong. First proper miss. Just a constant barrage of cram. Tempted to keep it like this. Again, it's not meant to be stupidly effective, just... Really fun to watch. Well, that worked. So I've got the aim point selection now to try and target different blocks every single shell. And it seems to be working. Now, these shells aren't the most deadly things. They're really not. But they should be enough to take out a weapon if they score a direct hit. Or at least badly damage it. And there's lots of them. And this weapon is really cheap. It's like 15,000 for the entire thing. Needs to be more optimised, though. At the moment, it's just been quickly created to see what this would look like, and I love it. <laughs> just the rain of shells. Problem is, this is probably horribly ammo inefficient, and now that ammo isn't free, probably not a smart thing to do. Do I care? No. <laughs> not in the slightest. That is lovely. Against smaller vehicles, this is going to be deadly. Yep, absolutely love it. Okay, just need to make it a bit more efficient than it currently is. Also, yeah, the shells need to be fired a bit slower. The problem is, now the enemy's dead, look at how many shells are going to waste. The faster they hit the target, the less likely we have loads of them in the air like this. Still going. Still going. 
But yeah, need to be more efficient. As you can see, they've got a very light orange trail. That means their density is really low. They haven't got enough explosive in them. Okay, let's uh, arm this all up. I'll redo that later on. At the moment, I'm going to call that a resounding success. And I need to do the front armor and alter a few more things. What I'm going to do is completely remove this section here because it's just... It's just a really exposed RTG. I'm going to remove that, armor up this. I'll keep the fuel in there. I'll keep the ammo in here even though that is really risky. Just to try and keep the overall look and style of it the same. Then I'm tempted to add a runway for at least one aircraft. I don't think I'll have too many aircraft ever really docked here. Unlike, unlike a carrier, I don't really need it to have them all docked. I mean, I don't really need it like in a carrier either in this game, but with a carrier, it just feels weird if we don't. With this, we can just assume the planes are nearby and dock briefly for fuel. So just need a runway for one. Okay, slower velocity, much less time in the air. And the range still seems okay. The enemy was much further away a second ago, and it was still able to hit. We'll do some more tests, and then decide. Of course, the more velocity, the longer range the weapon can be, but the more time you can spend in the air, especially against close targets. Which is really annoying. So we want to have a kind of happy medium. Although, obviously, it is meant to be a long-range weapon, the enemies won't always stay long-range. Because they're mean. As this paddle gun explodes, I have now set up a really basic AI, so now the fortress will always try to target the enemy. It'll stay at a certain altitude, target the enemy, and that's it. That's all it'll do. Then it should try to go back into the centre of the resource ring afterwards, I believe. Am I correct in this? Yep, it's totally going back. Excellent. That's all I wanted to see. Okay, now finally moving on to the detection system. So I've just put down a really simple detection system on the craft. The auto detection from the sandbox is now offline. And I want to see if we are going to land any hits at all. This is all with the default settings at the moment. With a very slight tweak. But it's pretty much just the default settings for all intents and purposes. The only thing I've done is slow down the averages a little bit. Because I want to hit slower targets. That's not awful, honestly. I expected that to be far worse for the first attempt. But we are landing quite a few of the hits. And as soon as I say that, almost all of the shots miss. Of course they do. So clearly, there's still a lot of work to be done. As you can probably tell, by me really hating the ocean at the moment. Though on the upside, as you may be able to tell, all of our shells now are a far deeper red because I've been working on the Tetra with them as well. So now they are much better made. Actually going off... Some common sense here with their construction. So they are hitting for a lot more. When they hit. Okay. Time to mess around a bit more. Attempt number two. And although they're still the odd miss. They're far closer. So now it's favouring slower vessels even more. So it should be able to deal with these small movements just fine. Since it kind of just ignores them. Which was the problem before. Because the plunderer kept on going like this, left to right. The detection system thought that, oh, that must mean the ship is now going to veer massively to the left or the right. Now it mostly ignores that. Okay, I would say that's good enough for now. I'll tweak it more later. But lots of hits there. And once again, the shells now are a much lovelier shade of red. Probably tweak those as well in the future. So, what next then? So we have the detection system, at least in terms of how I'm going to have the settings set. I'll be placing them all over the craft, don't worry, I'm not going to have this weird line of them. Plus, you don't need all of them. I just wanted all of them there so I could check how their accuracy ranks against each other. I won't be using all of them. They'll be all over the craft. Then I need to armor up this section more since this has the fuel refinery, which will just detonate otherwise. I've, re I've removed the missile system, which means what I can do is essentially use the front here as mostly as a slab of armor. Make sure there's armor on the inside as well. Going to keep the wooden aesthetic on the outside, so what I'm going to use is, if I can find it, there, the reinforced set. Because from the outside, it'll look like it's just... A normal piece of wood, but actually, surprise, it's metal. Not quite as good as metal, admittedly, but it's close enough. It's somewhere in between. So that's what's going to go, and then I'll have a layer of metal inside. 
won't be super safe, but yeah, I don't want to really spend all that much more, and I really don't want the looks to change more either. These two buildings need to be there, otherwise the looks have changed way too much. Okay, been messing around with our fuel, since apparently the old fuel refinery is only giving us 10 fuel per second, which really isn't enough for when we're going to have all the planes and stuff. So now it's giving us 40, and it should be absolutely fine and stable. So that's one more thing off the to-do list. Surprising how many things I've got to do here. This is really racking up the time. Okay, so now working on the back section here. This is where our aircraft are going to go. Not quite sure if I'm going to have just one facing this way or maybe two facing outwards and then have two kind of docking areas, but this is where we're going to have a dart or two or perhaps one of the heavy bombers. And look, I've added railings to this section because unlike the original founders, we care about health and safety. <laughs> we're the good guys, remember. We care, so you don't have to. Oh yeah, the dart doesn't have any detection systems currently. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a lot of missed shots. Okay, time to test out then if I can even give um, the dart detection from the main vehicle. The problem is, our detection likes slow, larger targets, and the dart's going to go after very small, very quick targets. So either I'm going to have to give the dart its own detection system, or perhaps one of the other vehicles needs a more substantial one. Not too sure. But for now, just want to make sure this works. So, I'm going to attach this, then going to go after a larger target and see if the dart can actually hit something. Also, just to show how small this fortress is, this is the dart. The thing which we have three of on both sides of the carrier. Which doesn't even take up half of the overall size of the carrier. Yeah. It's really tidy, so I don't expect this to be capable of fighting godly enemies by itself or anything. Yeah, as you can see, against a flying squirrel, there's absolutely no chance. I've just done some tests versus larger vehicles. The transmitter definitely works, and against the crossbones and everything else, the dart can hit flawlessly. Though versus something which moves so much... It just doesn't update fast enough, which means it's never going to quite hit it. Which is a very real problem. Also, are those shells slower than I remember? Or am I going mad? So I need to figure out if there's a way to have the settings different for multiple vehicles. So if multiple detection systems on the same mainframe. Or am I going to have to need just a different detection system on the darts? I mean, we got there eventually, but before the dart was getting that on its first or second attack. That took way too long, and we would have took damage from that. So to recap now the detection system, because I've been looking back at the footage I've already recorded, and my god, I have rambled so much. You'll be happy to know most of it has been cut. So although there's still loads in the video, yeah, I was just trying to learn things, just going about things in circles, and just getting things wrong all the way. Essentially, it wasn't so much the variety of the detection systems I was using, the detection items, blocks, whatever you want to call them. It was more the default settings which was causing a problem. It just wasn't really set up for the mortar. They work well for like 90% of things, just having them all as defaults. But with the mortars, I was just hitting everything but the enemy after messing around with them. I've got it now to where it's almost back to the same level as when I had the auto detect on. So... Everything is working pretty darn well now. Now, of course, it doesn't work as well for the dart, and that's the problem, so I'll be looking into how to fix that, so don't worry. Feel free to tell me in the comments below how to fix that if you wish, but most likely I've already looked up guides and made sure that that's up and running before the next video, so I act a bit more, um, what's the word? Competent. So once again, here's the Prowler. As you can see, the dart's having absolutely no problem aiming at the target. Here comes the first round of mortars. One thing I think I need to do is add a slight firing delay to all of the mortars, just because when the fight first starts, they're stationary, and then the enemy instantly moves, and the first few shells just completely fail. Ooh, a couple going a bit wide there, but yet that is just fine. It's either on point or a near miss most of the time. Oh, 
Okay, so the dark has a little bit of trouble sometimes. Or perhaps the dark just hates the ocean. You never know. And now it's not really moving. It makes it a lot easier. Perfect. Absolutely fantastic. Again, one of the shells going somewhere, but yet much better than to begin with. And I think I got way too hung up on trying to have every type of detection possible. That made me spend way too much time just going around in circles. You know what? I'm not going to talk about detection again, I think, because I am now sick of hearing myself saying the word detection every time I say it. I just get a little bit more upset about life. So I've just done a test versus the Plunderer, um, not in godly mode or anything else. Now it looks like we won. In fact, we did win. And the accuracy was just fine once again with the crams. I'm not talking about that anymore. But what I did notice is our engine went down quite early. So now your fortress is taking damage. It's trying to repair itself because it has three or four repair bots somewhere. But it is also dying. So essentially, it has killed us. Because we need an engine in order for the fortress to stay alive. That's just how fortresses work in this game. So, what I think I need is a backup engine. Just a small engine elsewhere. Currently, the engine is there, just in front of the AI block, which is that. If we put a small engine here, that would also benefit from the armour of the weapons. But as it stands, we technically beat a godly. So, more than happy with that. Especially since the godly was over double our cost. Also, just found where the repair bots are in this little corner here. So then, I am pretty much all out of time, so let's have a very quick recap what I've actually done today. So the main thing is I've added the weapon systems and massively armoured up the core. I've added a new refinery system. I have relearned the detection system after getting it wrong so many times in this video. I now finally understand it a lot better. I've also asked a few people, and yeah, my beginning understanding was definitely very much incorrect. But there we are. It now works absolutely fine. You can still access pretty much all of this vehicle using the avatar, which I'm really, really happy with. And I've just now added a tiny engine in the very back section over here. Now, it is absolutely tiny. We definitely need a larger backup engine. And it turns out the reason why the first engine went down so easily is because I'm still using regular wooden armor. I completely forgot that this wall even existed. And it got hit once, and the engine just went and vanished. So, still some things to fix when we go into the campaign itself. But I think I've done an okay job keeping it the same style as the previous design, but now being a bit more combat ready. And we can keep on changing it in the campaign anyway. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. I promise in the next video we'll be a little bit more single-minded and get things done a bit more efficiently and a bit less rambly if my sanity ever returns. So, thank you for watching, and goodbye.